Okay, this is our um, lesson uh, for 6.2.3. Um, I, I kind of rushed through the calculator part. The calculator part is really important because this is what we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester. So I just want to talk mostly about the standard normal distribution as it relates to the calculator. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at. And that's why the calculator is over here. All right, so now we talked about most of these things, but now we've got this uh, formula, okay? So don't forget, we have this beautiful thing right here that we want to keep track of, super duper important. The z-score formula, okay, is the value minus the mean divided entirely by the standard deviation. And so this value computes the number of standard deviations that the value x lies from the mean and so that makes it super duper um, important okay and so basically in the calculator we will convert okay all values to z-scores so that we can use the calculator, all right? So we're just going to convert all values to z-scores, okay? <clears throat> now, we don't really need to do that when we have this beautiful, nice standard deviations, right? So the z-score here is 0. The reason this is 0 is because this value is 0 away from the mean. It's right at the mean, so it's zero away from the mean. And so now I add a standard deviation of 113 points, and I get a z-score of one away or one standard deviation. And then I add another 113 points, and I get a z-score that is two standard deviations away from the center. And if I add another 113 points, I get a z-score that is three away from the center. All right, and now we're going to do the same thing, except now we're going to subtract because we're going to the left. And so this is minus 1, and the minus shows us that we're below, okay, um, the average, all right? So that's probably worth noting. Note, positive z-score above mean, negative z-score below the mean, okay? All right. So now, here is our lovely example, okay, that we had in our book. And says, although, <clears throat> although 500 and 700 are not exactly 1, 2, or 3 standard deviations from the mean, we can figure out how many standard deviations they are from the mean. In fact, that's exactly what the z-score tells us. So we will convert these test scores, 500 and 700, to z-scores. Okay? And we convert them. So that basically we can use the normal CDF command in the calculator. That's the point there. All right. Now I'm not going to go through the calculation, but you plug in 500 for the value, and you get out negative uh, 0.12 for the z-score. You plug in 700 for the value, and you get out 1.65 for the value. Okay, great. So now how do I use this in my calculator, right? Well, I need the normal CDF function. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm actually going to hit second, and the VARS button here in uh, right below the D-pad. And what will come up is the second one is normal CDF, so I'm going to hit number two. And so now it wants a lower bound, okay? And so the lower bound is your left score and that's going to be the negative 0.12 right so you have negative 0.12 all right and you hit enter and then the upper bound that you have is 1.67 okay so i'm just going to plug in 1.6 oh sorry 5 okay 1.65 now this is asking for the mean now i want you to look at something right here's our Here's our table, okay? 
I'm plugging in Z scores. So if I'm plugging in Z scores, I'm on this line right here because I'm plugging in Z scores. So if I'm plugging in Z scores, you'll notice that this is the mean. Okay, so the mean is zero when I'm doing Z scores. And the standard deviation is one, right? So the standard deviation is one when I'm using Z scores. So this screen, we always use mu equals zero and sigma equals one for Z scores, right? And this, I think, hopefully this will eliminate some of the confusion we had yesterday. Now, your calculator may look a little bit different. If it does look a little bit different, follow the book, okay? In the book, you're going to have your normal CDF, and you're going to put your left Z-score in, comma, right Z-score, okay? And it will look pretty much like this, right, with the negative 1.2, the comma, and the 1.65. And of course, the comma is right above the 7, okay? And so if you... Right, so there's, there's your normal CDF, there's your left score, there's your comma, and your right score. And then you just hit enter, and there pops out the 49. Uh, eight two, all right. Now, uh, again, a note. Ooh, no, no. Your score may be a little off due to rounding. Okay. If in the last decimal place you're maybe one or two digits off of what's in the book, don't worry about that. All right. If you're off in the second dis digit, you probably did something wrong. All right. So as long as you got 49, and then you got something between like six and zero, you're probably pretty good over here. Okay, and that makes us happy. All right. So don't forget, this is what. A lot of your calculators will look like when you plug it in and you'll get this value out right here all right so we want to use this result sorry we want to use this result to write our conclusion all right and the conclusion that you're going to write is 49.83 percent of the SAT math scores were between 500 and 700 and this gives you your area right that we got from our normal CDF as a decimal the SAT mass score is the trait that we are interested in and that needs to be stated and then these are the values that we were interested in and those have to go there so these area this area is related to these values for this trait and that makes us happy okay so now step number one is make the sketch and this helps you to have a gut check that you haven't done anything wrong. Step number two is calculate the z-score for the key values. Plug those z-scores into the normal CDF and get out an area. So that's going to be equal to some decimal percentage area. Okay, and you want it to have three places. And then step four is state the conclusion with the area, the trait, and the values. All right. Now. Uh, this is sort of the introduction. The next one is an example, so I'm going to wait and do a second video as an example.